And I think that we need to understand that uh, this is not the end of the pandemic. Uh, we don't know if this is going to come back again, so we therefore need to be prepared. So even if we scale down certain areas, we need to be prepared to press a button mm -hmm. and get all the response teams back working uh, in the way that they have been so far. So in terms of volunteers, even though the tasks are likely not to be uh, as great as that they have been over the last uh, a few weeks and, and months, but we need to maintain that interaction with them should they be required to uh, um, to, to be called in to, to, to support the government. This week the lockdown is being repealed for both the over and under 70s. How will we safeguard the elderly going forward? Will Golden Hour continue? Yeah, the plan is very much uh, to support the elderly uh, as we have done. Uh, we just need to be uh, very clear that even though the uh, the regulations are, are not going to be the same as they have been uh, over the last uh, month or so. Uh, the advice still is uh, remains uh, the same, which is that people are, are better off being uh, at home. Uh, and if they can get uh, members of a family to support them, then they should be doing that. There is always a risk as, uh, as long as people are, are leaving the, the houses. Um, home is certainly the the best place uh, to to be but but clearly that needs also to be balanced with the fact that people do uh, do need to get their exercise and and so on um but in terms of us given the the support uh, the golden hour for example it is an area that we will continue to uh, to support the elderly also under the civil contingencies umbrella is the repatriation to gibraltar of residents uh, who are stuck abroad are there many people still hoping to get home that you're aware of Yes, there is. I think that uh, much of the, the work has been done. Uh, we've uh, managed to get uh, people away from uh, various uh, countries. There's only a few, I think, uh, India, um, South Africa. Um, the one that we have the most is actually in Morocco. Uh, as you know, only um, just over a week ago, we managed to uh, carry out a repatriation. Um, and much of that engagement still continues with the Foreign Office in, in trying to get the remaining numbers that we have still in, in Morocco. Uh, hopefully, uh, we will be able to get something um, sorted out as quickly as we can. And obviously this pandemic has a huge number of negatives, but there are also some positives to take from it. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I mean, just looking back, the fact that uh, we did not have uh, these groups to deal with it. So uh, pulling people together who would normally ordinarily work with other uh, departments, having that uh, a focus to look after the, the most vulnerable. So the work that our, our response teams have done, um, but delivering packs to those uh, vulnerable families, uh, checking on uh, up on them, I think has just been great. And uh, uh, equally, the Public Information Call Centre uh, operating a 24-7 uh, capability, uh, making sure that uh, wherever uh, people require that, that support, that they're able to engage with them and then uh, either get a response to deliver uh, something to them or in, uh, indeed uh, help them out. Um, but uh, as we uh, said earlier, uh, volunteer support uh, without the support of the members of the family, just given the, the spare free time to uh, uh, come in and, uh, and help us out, I, I, think, I think has been uh, amazing.